Hey, it's Brett Contreras here in uh, Brett Contreras Strength and Conditioning, aka Brett's Garage. Um, I have a post on uh, strengthcoach.com right now. It's a really good post. If you're a member, I recommend you go uh, read through it. But basically, I'm not trying to get people to start doing crunches anymore. I'm just kind of questioning um, Dr. Stuart McGill's research. Um, not so much questioning his research, but trying to offer an explanation as to why in McGill's labs he shows that um, 18,000 to 25,000 low load flexion extension cycles in the lumbar spine lead to disc herniations when there's people who have performed millions of crunches throughout their lives and have not herniated their discs. So um, I just want to show you um, basically if you've got the lumbar spine when it flexes and extends, um, the discs, the nuclei within the disc, picture this is a disc, there's nuclei in the middle, and it will migrate depending on, you know, whether you're flexing and extending. And when you flex the lumbar spine like this, it migrates posteriorly and pushes up against the annulus of the disc, up against the, um, and it, it works its way through the laminate, through the different um, annulus fibers. So that can lead to disc herniation. So pretty much the strength training industry has said, you know, avoid lumbar flexion. Don't do these exercises. There's better exercises anyway. And I'm, I have a different line of thought. I kind of think anything's good as long as it doesn't hurt you. It's good to strengthen almost any range of motion. In some sports like jiu-jitsu, having really strong rectus abdominis can help you out. So, um, for, in that instance, you know, if you do heavy weighted crunches and they weren't bad for your lumbar spine, then I say go ahead and do them. The question is whether or not they're bad for your lumbar spine. If you read McGill's stuff, you'd say, of course it's bad, you know, flexing and extending. But McGill has stated that it's end range flexing ex and extension. There's some wiggle room in there. If here's your disc and the nuclei is just going in this neutral zone, then it's not that big of a deal. It's not creating damage. So how do you know if you're staying in a safe neutral zone? Well, in a crunch, you would want to make sure that most of, see right here, I'm going to keep my lumbar spine, it's not moving. My lumbar spine is not moving right now. I've got some wiggle room. So if you crunch, now I'll, I'll go all at the lumbar spine. See that? So there's, di there's difference. There's lumbar range of motion and thoracic range of motion. So I'm going to show you it with a crunch. Here would be, like I'm not even moving, my lumbar spine, there's still a gap here in my, like I'm not even really moving much at my lumbar vertebrae. It's mostly all thoracic. Now, if I actually put my feet up and like, I mean it's really hard for me to move my lumbar spine. Still this here is all mostly all thoracic range of motion. So if I wanted to do lumbar range of motion, I kind of have to like go like this. It's really hard to get that lumbar spine to flex up. So that's my explanation as to why there's um, some contrast between McGill's research and what's going on in the real world. I don't think we're getting that end range flexion when we crunch. However, if you're someone who has back pain, or someone who sits all day long, you would not want to do these crunches. What's the point? If you're not, you know, there are, there are safer exercises, planks, side planks, pal-off presses, and work on those because you need core stability. But as far as core strength goes, I always used to do heavy uh, dumbbell crunches, and I would put, you know, a hundred pounds on my on myself like this and just crunch up like that. I used to be really, really strong at these. This is only a hundred pounds and I just struggled to get a few, but at one point I could do 160 pounds for 20 reps. And then I found out crunching is bad for you, I stopped doing them. Now I realize I'm, I've kind of dived into the research and I don't think it's as bad for you. So um, that rectus abdominis strength, when I would have people 
in jujitsu, when I used to practice jujitsu, I would have people come on top of me and I could kind of push them up based on my rectus abdominal strength. I could push them off of me. So there is wiggle room. It matters where your where the flexion is coming from. So thoracic flexion, not that bad. Lumbar flexion, very bad. Also with deadlifts, you watch people, you know, ideal deadlift form would be like this. Keeping the, the thoracic and lumbar spine in, in neutral or even slightly arched. When the weight gets heavy, you will watch people, especially powerlifters, go around the upper back like this. Now, you notice I'm rounding my upper back, but still keeping the lumbar spine pretty much locked up. Not much motion there. So again, here's how much range of motion I can get in my thoracic and in my thoracic spine with flexion. So here's what a good deadlift looks like. Here's what a lot of power lifters do right here. And if you watch, my lumbar spine is not moving. It's just, you know, my lumbar spine stays there. So you got some wiggle room. So that helps explain why some people aren't hurting themselves when they deadlift, when they round their upper back, not their lower back. So I guess all I'm saying is just try and pay attention to where the flexion is coming from. Thoracic flexion is okay. Um, lumbar flexion is not okay. There is a little bit of wiggle room in there. Um, there's more kind of functional um, exercises for a standing position, standing sports. The, the rectus abdominis kind of transfers energy, acts as a transmitter, not a producer of power. So you also want to do things like, you know, like cable chops and, uh, or cable lifts, cable chops, and things like that, landmines and different things where you're transferring energy. But in some sports, such as gymnastics, you know, you would want to do lots of different hanging leg raise type movements to strengthen that rectus abdominis. Some sports where you're hanging from a bar, where you're lying on the ground, the rectus abdominis needs to have concentric strength. And it's not just a transmitter of energy, it's an actual producer of power. So in that, in that situation, you would want power. So again, not trying to advocate crunches, not trying to bring crunches back. I'm just kind of questioning why is there such a gap? You know, people doing millions of crunches and not hurting their lumbar spine versus McGill's research in the lab that shows 18 to 25,000 flexion cycles um, and under heavy load, only 5,000 flexion cycles will produce herniation. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure to check out my blog at www.brettcontreras.com or brettcontreras.wordpress.com. Thanks a lot.